I'm Mike Stanton from Build America Mutual, I'm here with my colleagues Grant Dewey and Morgan Fahey, and we're pleased to join you on Asset TV to discuss the municipal bond market in 2022, looking back at a remarkably volatile first half and trying to cut through the fog on what's coming next. We're recording this on June 15th, right after the Fed made its decision to raise short-term interest rates 75 basis points, and the impact of inflation remains the most important headline in all fixed income markets. But we'd also like to take this opportunity to dive deeper and talk about some of the factors that are specific to municipal bond investing. Morgan, can we ask you to put some numbers around the issue and talk about how municipal bond investors were impacted in the first half? Sure, Mike. Investors so far this year have seen some serious volatility driven by rates, inflation, and ultimately sell pressure in our market. Total returns year to date are down about 8.5%, which, just to put it in a historic perspective, that is the worst start to a year in 40 years. Um, we have seen new issue supply be lower as well this year. It's about 8% lower year over year basis. And we have seen a couple spots moving towards kind of lowering their estimates for the balance of the year that we would probably attribute to refundings just being harder, you know, to get done in a higher rate environment. And in terms of kind of how munis have performed versus treasuries. We did see municipals underperform treasuries, particularly in May, where we saw the 30-year ratio hit 110% of treasuries. But this did kind of create an interesting, attractive opportunity for crossover accounts and non-traditional buyers to enter our market. And we did see that take place at the end of May. Great. So Grant, let's get you into the conversation. Um, how shocking was this for investors? So a, a huge percentage of U.S. municipal bonds are owned by individuals. They typically think of this as the safest part of their portfolio. And now this year they started getting statements showing net losses, uh, even the absence of any kind of credit concerns. How do they react? I think they were very shocked. I think municipal bond traders were even more shocked. But uh, yeah, this was a kind of an unprecedented move. Uh, you know, not only not only in the severity, but also the duration. There was about uh, 13, 14 weeks in a row of outflows. And so, um, you know, this was, I think, the muni weakness uh, was impacted not so much by credit deterioration, which, um, which we saw during the early stages of the pandemic, but a little bit more uh, by rate fears. And so, you know, that was exacerbated, as Morgan said, by, uh, you know, significant outflows and very little liquidity. Um, and so it was a kind of, you know, the muni market, I like to say, is prone to extremes, very technical. And so I think in the extremes, it tends to get overbought and oversold. This was clearly an oversold condition. So at BAM, we're obviously a credit shop. Our, our focus is on paying principal and interest on all the bounds we insure. Um, so, you know, we've talked about how we got here. I'd like to pivot and start taking a look forward a little bit. You know, a lot of that credit strength is tied back to money, states, and, and local governments received under the CARES Act and the ARPA Act. Those last couple of checks under those programs are going out right now. So looking forward, uh, do you have any sense of what's going to happen to the credit in the future? Yeah, I mean, I think we're going to see more volatility in the second half, but you know, for different reasons, driven by uh, by different factors. So in the first half, there was very little impact on credit spreads. Muni credit actually is quite strong. State local balance sheets um, saw higher than expected tax uh, revenues. Uh, care, there was uh, direct federal aid, as you mentioned, with ARPA, uh, $350 billion. And, and uh, you know, there was pretty, I think that money was pretty broadly defined. So that's been getting spent down. So we're I think in a situation now where, you know, there's political pressure to, um, you know, to deploy some of uh, this this money. There's, uh, you know, budget surpluses. New Jersey had a uh, uh, situation where they have 10 billion of kind of surplus, and so uh, Governor Murphy uh, mentioned today there's going to be a two billion dollar uh, uh, property tax um, uh, forgiveness, essentially for. Uh, for lower wage earners. So um, I think I think there's going to be much more of a focus on credit as as we get into kind of a more of a recessionary type environment. The money gets spent down from uh, these, um, you know, federal uh, basically handouts. Um, and uh, so we'll see in the second half of the year, 
muni weakness driven by credit deterioration, not by rate hikes. And typically when that happens, it happens on a case-by-case kind of idiosyncratic basis, right? I mean, one of the, my favorite lines about the muni market is when you've seen one muni bond, you've seen one muni bond. Uh, there's a lot of idiosyncratic risk out there. So, you know, in addition to that fiscal risk, what other kind of risks uh, should investors be aware of? I think, um, you know, a, a lot of demand for bond insurance actually is centered around some of these risks, like, you know, unfunded pension liabilities. The market will differentiate between credits. And so, you know, they will penalize, I think, the more vulnerable credits. And those can be credits that have unfunded pension liabilities. So during a recession, um, you know, that's going to, uh, you know, present some difficulty. Uh, you also, you know, obviously natural disaster risks um, is something we look at you know, very closely when, when we're underwriting uh, municipal bonds or qualifying bonds for, for insurance. So uh, these are the risks that are hard to quantify that investors, you know, should be looking at, uh, and if not, um, have the bonds professionally managed or, or insured by BAM. <laughs> So Morgan, the other big thing hanging out for the second half of the year is on the, the new money side, the, the new investment in infrastructure. Um, historically, about 70% of all uh, public infrastructure in the U.S. has been built by state and local governments financed in the muni bond market. This year, the federal government's coming to the table with a lot of grants, but a lot of those grants have strings attached. Um, they have to have uh, matching funds. What are you expecting in terms of the, the new money outlook? Yep. So I think that this could be a potential positive um, for our market. You know, we could see new money kind of funding some of these projects and continue to see exciting things for investors like green infrastructure bonds. And overall, I think it'll create, you know, just interesting opportunities for investors to, to utilize the tax exemption in our market. Well, thanks, Grant. Thanks, Morgan, for being with us today. And thank you for watching. For more information about BAM on the outlook on how municipal bonds protect investors and help build essential infrastructure all across the U.S., please visit our website at buildamerica.com slash united.